Today, I am going to talk to you about a seizure I had that resulted in a broken ankle, which is now healing from surgery. So, as you can see, now I have a purple cast. It is a fiberglass cast. And this is, I believe, the fourth or fifth cast that I've had since my ankle broke. It started with a seizure, or I guess a cluster of seizures. I had a few drop seizures that day, and initially I woke up because I thought the door was open. So I woke up to go to close the door, but the door was closed, and I had two drop seizures at the door. The dogs came to help me, Debbie was there to help me um, pick myself up, and then I went to the bathroom to try and clean myself up because I thought, okay, two drop seizures, then I'm probably not gonna have any more. So I wanted to wash my face and brush my teeth, but I had another drop seizure in the bathroom and hit the back of my head against the wall because the bathroom is super tiny. And so, from my memory, I thought that Xena barked and called my mom, but apparently from her memory, she woke up because she heard me banging my head against the wall. Um, that was another drop seizure, not a tonic-clonic. So the fall was just a big bang on the wall, I guess. So. I wanted to make it to my room by myself and I was very stubborn and I wanted my mom to give me space because she was sitting in the bathroom with me and asking me if I wanted her to help me get up but I just told her to give me space which was a mistake for sure and so I ended up going to my room and had another drop seizure and I felt like I felt like my mom was still watching me because I was upset because I thought that I was having these seizures because she stressed me out but it turns out she wasn't even watching me so with this last drop seizure Instead of bending at the knee like I usually do, because usually the drop seizures feel like somebody, some ghost is pushing me backwards onto the floor, I usually bend at the knee. But with this last drop seizure, I ended up bending at my right ankle. Only at my right ankle. It. It bent like how a soft shell taco bends and it and I fell towards my right side so my ankle broke and of course it hurt like hell and I screamed as soon as it happened as soon as I felt that crack uh, in my ankle and I started screaming and my mom came and she thought that it could have just been a sprain because a sprain hurts a lot but when I scream like that I I I'm not making anything up I'm not exaggerating anything and I kept screaming for her to Called the ambulance and she she thought it was just a sprain but I just I couldn't handle it I was crying I was screaming and so she eventually figured it out that yeah it's a broken ankle or you know this is really painful we need to get it checked out 
So she called the, the ambulance and the ambulance came. I didn't want them to move my ankle at all, but I knew it had to happen because that was the only way I was going to get to the hospital. And I was just in so much pain and they were telling me to try and breathe slowly because if I breathe too fast then I would hyperventilate and pass out and that's not good. That's not good for anybody. And so because the building here has a really small elevator they had to bring a wheelchair to bring me to the ambulance uh, truck. So they had to bring me a wheelchair to take me in the wheelchair to the elevator to take me down and then take me to the back uh, entrance and take me down the stairs because there there's stairs both ways there's stairs at the back entrance there's stairs at the front entrance and it's not wheelchair accessible there is no way that um, a stretcher would have fit in the elevator because it's so tiny and so they pretty much just lifted the wheelchair that I was in and brought it down the stairs and took me um, took me to the back of the truck then transferred me to the stretcher. Eventually they uh, checked my vitals for the second time while I was in the ambulance. They took me to the hospital. I was in the ER uh, for a while. They took me to ambulatory which is basically uh, just me on the stretcher against a wall because there were no available places in the ER at some point they did uh, an x-ray and then they decided that they were gonna set my ankle and then they set it uh, while I was under because obviously that would hurt so much and I would probably have a seizure while they were doing it because of the pain. They had me on painkillers too of course so that I wouldn't come out of it with pain and then they put a cast after they set it to keep it in place and then took another x-ray and then uh, told me to come back the next morning to talk to the doctor about the x-ray and then the next morning I got there and they said that I'm gonna need surgery because they set it but they didn't set it all the way and because I'm young they have to make it perfect so that I don't have any problems with walking for the rest of my life. So then they scheduled me for the Friday. The, the break happened on the Tuesday. I had the appointment Wednesday morning they scheduled me for surgery on Friday and what happened was when I got to the hospital they had to keep pushing my surgery back because there were more life-threatening emergencies and I understood that so they decided to admit me to the hospital and pretty much just put me on a waiting list until I can have the surgery. I ended up waiting until I believe it was the Sunday that I had the surgery. Then 
they put me in another cast and pretty much just waited a while and I thought I had um, sutures that I had you know uh, stitches in my leg after the surgery but when they finally discharged me on the following Wednesday uh, and they opened the thing, they opened the cast to put a new one to see how it was healing and to tell me to come back the next week to uh, get the staples out. Uh, then I found out that there was staples. And so they put me in another cast before they discharged me. And I came back the next week. And then they had to take out only half of the staples because it wasn't fully done healing. And then they put another uh, cast over that. And then the next week I went back to get the rest of the staples out and then they put this fiberglass cast so the ER cast, surgery cast, discharge cast, um, half staple cast and then fiberglass cast yeah that's five that's five casts that I've had so far and so then they told me I have to come back in two weeks to get another x-ray to see how it's healing and that is actually next week and I just hope that it's healing well pretty much what they had to do was they had to put a plate uh, against the outside of my ankle with screws so that the bone stays in place. That one can stay in for my whole life. What they were worried about before the surgery was if the ligaments on the other side of my ankle were too torn that they would have to put another plate over there uh, and then they'd have to take that out in three months but I got lucky and they said that they didn't have to do that so I wouldn't have to be uncomfortable while I'm healing and so now I can introduce myself as the woman of steel to everybody <laughs> uh, because they put stainless steel in my body. I can definitely say that this is my first major bone break. I have had a seizure a few years ago where I had like a tiny fracture in my nose but it healed on its own quickly and I ended up looking like an alien because of it. That was also from another seizure uh, where I pretty much just face planted and, and broke my nose because of that. But that didn't need any surgery. But with my ankle, of course, that needed surgery. And by the time that it was time to have the surgery when I actually had the surgery they had to re-break the bone in order to fix it properly after the surgery I felt like I broke my ankle for a second time because it was very painful they had me they had me on painkillers um, while I was in the hospital, uh, they had me on morphine, and that helped me uh, with the pain a little bit, uh, 
when they added Tylenol to the mix. When they discharged me, they gave me Percocet. I would not recommend Percocet for anybody who has seizures. Anybody who has epilepsy, do not take Percocet. Ask for something else. Because I had headaches the whole time. And I had to keep taking them because I was still in so much pain. I got the generic, which was Oxy. I was able to, at some point, take only Tylenols during the day and then take that at night to be able to sleep because it was bearable with the Tylenol during the day. Um, but it was very uncomfortable at night, so I had to take it for sleep. At some point, I was only taking Tylenols, um, but that's, that took a long time uh, to be able to only take Tylenols, and I still had headaches for a few days. Um, I even still had headaches with the Tylenols. Eventually, I was able to not need any of the painkillers, and it was a day or two when the headaches were completely gone, uh, completely off of the medication. And I was just so happy to not have headaches anymore. And sure, I do have pain still in my ankle, but it is minimal now to a point where it's bearable where I can actually fall asleep without any painkillers. And I highly recommend not putting yourself in a position where any of your limbs can break. Any bones that break, they are going to hurt like hell. If you have seizures like me, be very careful. If you can, have somebody to be there for you, to watch over you. If you're having a day where you feel like you might have a seizure, if you have tonic-clonic seizures and you're not feeling well one day, then I just recommend staying in bed because I should have done that. I should have just stayed in bed. I would not have an ankle broken right now if I just stayed in bed. All choices have consequences, whether they are good consequences or bad consequences. In my case, it was a bad consequence because now I pretty much have to stay in bed and wait for my mom to come and watch me to go across with my walker to sit at the commode to go to the bathroom. And she still has to be there to watch me wipe and then come back with a walker to the bed. Can't make food for myself because I can't put any weight on my ankle, so I can't go to the kitchen to make my own food. I have to wait for my mom to make my food. I have a PSW that helps me take a bath. Uh, it's a sponge bath because I can't obviously get my cast wet and it's too dangerous to even go in the bathtub for me. So I have a PSW that helps me wash myself. And she brings me food that's ready because she's, she's not allowed to cook for me. That's not in their job description, but they can reheat food that was already made and bring it to me. Uh, or if there's fruit, then they can bring that to me. 
and pretty much I'm stuck in my bed uh, until I have an appointment or uh, or my sister comes to take me to the purple walk which I'll be in a wheelchair uh, my sister will be pushing me around uh, purple walk is this weekend and it's just it's very frustrating it has me at certain points where I feel like it is such a struggle to even find any positive any positive feeling while I'm stuck like this but <laughs> I mean of course I decided to just keep telling myself I'm now the woman of steel and I can pretty much say that to um, I can pretty much say that to anybody in the future if I'm traveling to a different country and they have to check me at the airport they have to use one of those wands to check my leg um, because I will definitely beep walking through the walking thing <laughs> and so I can just say oh I'm beeping because I'm I'm the woman of steel I have steal my ankle <laughs> and they'll pretty much just hopefully they'll laugh at that they'll think that was funny I've noticed that what I want to do with my life is that I want to make people laugh that that is my ultimate goal to eventually get to a point where I can make the whole world laugh and sure I only have 157 subscribers on my comedy channel right now but I'll keep at it and no matter what happens to me I will look for the positive or rather the funny side of things and I will share that with the world so that anybody else going through the same thing can have a laugh at themselves as well at least this way I can cheer others up and hopefully make the world a little bit brighter. Again, try not to break any bones because it hurts like hell. Now, if you like that, please come back for more. Like, subscribe, and be sure to tell your friends. I swear it's not a chore. Be sure to check out my other channels, my comedy channel, my vlog channel, and my gaming channel. My comedy channel for more laughs on Thursdays, my vlog channel to see what I'm up to every day, and my gaming channel for awesome playthroughs and wonderful streaming. I love you guys so, so, so much! Yeah.